Next speaker's name is Andreas Lugger Olsen from uh, Collision. He's an architect migrated from traditional physical design uh, towards interaction design, both within research, teaching, and business. Um, he's developing and designing projects that bridge the physical and the digital attributes for a wide range of both uh, public and private clients, such as uh, Saxo Bank and Audi also. So talking about physical exception handling, here is Andreas Lykke Olsen. Here he is. Thank you. And um, thank you for, for inviting me. And uh, I, I, I think um, I could be a, a good person to put after Peter's excellent talk, actually, because I, I'm one of those guys who uh, could sit around in, uh, in, 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 in some of those uh, studios that uh, Peter just talked about. <clears throat> um, my name is Andreas. I am educated as a real architect. Uh, you know, uh, I can draw, uh, animate, and stuff like that. But I have migrated into uh, the stuff that most of you probably do. And I've been around up here earlier uh, and been a part of some of the institutions uh, up here. But uh, I'm a part of uh, Collision, which is a small uh, design uh, company situated here in Aarhus. And uh, we do a lot of research and development within uh, the gap uh, between citizen participation. We've done a lot of that. And then advanced interfaces. We do other stuff as well. But <clears throat> today, I will talk about what we do in the real world uh, and a bit about how we do it. And I'll, I'll, I'll frame it to, uh, to uh, the public realm um, and uh, urban spaces. Uh, because, I mean, physical computing could be many things, but that's where well, I'll look at it. The uh, physical exception handling, it, it's a cool title, uh, but there is some, uh, some truth uh, to it. We can, uh, we can catch a lot of uh, exceptions uh, doing software, but uh, so, sometimes um, uh, physical exceptions, they are, they, they are pretty heavy sometimes and uh, hard to handle. So firstly, I'll just set the stage. It's a one minute movie just showing a bit about how we work, a bit about the physicalities, the different contexts, um, the different tools uh, and methods that we use. So it's analog, it's digital, it's physical, it's light, it's software, it's hardware, it's uh, multi-user setups, it's um, pretty fragmented. some of these examples uh, later on, but um, that was just a really quick uh, introduction. So being in, 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 a, in a public space, uh, in, the, in, in the public domain, or part of the city, uh, we always think that it's important to remember that the city is built on top of the city. Sounds, yeah, uh, sounds a bit naive, but it is. Uh, the city is made up for centuries, by layers of different infrastructures, different ideas and concepts, building traditions, and everything kind of blends together into the city that we, that we know. Um, but most of, often we, we tend to think that we can go tabula rasa and start from nothing or from scratch. But being inside the city, you kind of always have to add on to something. And the smart city concept is, in my opinion, the frosting on top of an already smart city. It's extremely smart already, but we add some new layers to it. And for some reason, and this is just a, a bit of uh, food of thought that you can bring home, I think it's peculiar that we never question whether we should go digital or not. It's, and uh, uh, for people like you as well, I mean, digital is always the answer for some reason. We are in the same boat, I admit, but it is sometimes a bit fun that uh, we can't solve some of the things in an analog way. <clears throat> the way we work with uh, a lot of our uh, urban installations, um, 
is that we try to find a hook, uh, some simple way for uh, inhabitants, pedestrians, uh, citizens to engage in our uh, environment or in, in our installations. And we do that by mixing function and fun. So working on the functionality, which is already ready part of something, and adding some playful fun layers. Or we play with the serious and the surprising. Or we play with the informative and the ambient. Because we are all, almost vomiting from the constant flow of information and communication that this place wants to push to you anytime. So if you can sometimes turn it into something else, you can create that surprise that will kind of reach out for people. Uh, and uh, at the same time, we, uh, we kiss a lot. We try to keep a symbol stupid. So um, a good example on, uh, on that, and again, a uh, return to, to some of the tools that we work with that, that Peter was referring to. Strawing. It's a bit of, a, of hardware production. Um, but again, we approach these, uh, these projects from a wide range of perspectives because we look at them from the city but try to solve them both in digital and in physical manners. So we can prototype and we can test a lot of things at home. But the point is that we can prove that the part of the system is working but it's first when we approach the real context that we can actually understand whether this will, 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 will be, I mean, in the end, will end up in a neat way. So the concept here and the KISS concept is basically a, a, a tunnel which was already there. It's a standard tunnel. It's the city as it is. And on top of that, it's a physical layer of light that solves the functionality of the light, the, the amount of the uh, lux provide, uh, need, that needs to be provided in the tunnel. And then the little gimmick then that when you, when you enter the tunnel, you turn on the light. When you leave the tunnel, you switch off the light. And in that little simple concept, which is fairly hard to, to, to implement uh, in a neat way, you have a lot of potential in play and in, in, in um, in engaging for anyone who approaches the, um, the tunnel. So the project still provides the functionality of a tunnel that is lit in some way. And at the same time, there's a lot of playful features. So the hook here is basically your presence, right? It's really simple, but you become part of your physical surrounding in a public space. No nemi, no nemi day needed. <laughs> so <clears throat> it requires being around. It requires uh, understanding the infrastructure, the software, the steel, the bricks, the concrete, the humans being around there. The rain, traffic, heat, noise, all the annoying things that, for instance, the, the drone capturer from Terma is, is confronted with as well. Um, but, and, and then, of course, the, the idiots. I mean, people like you who are not interested in using the stuff the way that I intended it to be used, um, th th that you need to design for, right? Uh, of course, there are vandalism, but there are also people who are trying to, to, uh, to spoof the system or to play around with it and most often in fantastic ways. So in an example like this, I was uh, part of testing it when we implemented it. Imagine the first thing that I drew on that humongous facade. Just, just imagine it. Anything? Yes, I did. And because of that, we uh, decreased the tail or uh, the possibility of drawing on this facade. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> people are creative when they get new tools in their hands but again, the hook here is the stuff that you already have in your pocket. It's the, the mobile phone or your cellular. Um, it's not even an app, it's a web app, so you don't need to download anything, but it's the idea that you reach out and let people touch the urban surface in a simple way, 
There's a, a que queuing system, uh, so when you hook on, you end up in a line, uh, you are automatically uh, locked off and the next uh, ones in line are connected and you can play around. So again, this is not a, a hardcore interface, uh, it's a, no, not a critical system, but it's something that is really, it's a really easy hook and people can become fairly creative uh, using it. And a And again, yes, there's a lot of software in this. Oh, not a lot for you, <laughs> but there's software in it. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I will still say that, that it's, a, it's a small part of the equation. Uh, I mean, understanding and use it, utilizing the existing city, understanding the urban squares, where can you be situated, where, where do you have good uh, spots for gathering, uh, understanding the fussy users, it's, it, 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 it's not, uh, it, it's, it's a really broad and fussy group of users. They are young, they are old, they have no knowledge of uh, technology. I mean, perhaps they have their phone in, in the pocket anyway, but, but helping uh, that stuff out is, 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 is quite complex. And my point is that when you mix up the, the software or the app and apply it to a, a physical space, you have a way better experience than you have by just using a regular app on something. When, when, when I uh, prepared this talk, I thought about which apps that had made great memories, I mean, that, that I have great memories about, is absolutely not. I mean, I played Candy Crush, <laughs> and I'm uh, at the level 3,600. And that's, that's the only horrible memory I have because it's eaten all my time. Uh, but, but, but I think that Applying technology to physicality brings something. And I'll end up with this. And that's another example. The function is, 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 is uh, uh, urban furniture. Uh, it looks nice when it's not in use. It just has a certain pulse. It wakes up in the evening by itself. And then whenever you approach it, the hook is just, we know you're here and you're welcome. So. It's just adding a small color based on your mass, so it's a range of uh, large capacitive sensors uh, inside it. Um, and, and the idea is that there's no meaning in this apart from the fact that you can play around with it. But the physical exception handling that I talked about is, the problem is here that people started jumping on them. And even though they were tested in, in many ways, people found out and we have uh, videos of that on Instagram, uh, really drunk people, right? Uh, jumping up and the light goes out and they jump down or land, land on it and they actually n not broke them, but kind of deformed some of the, um, of, of the plastic shells. Um, and my point is that sometimes s software is simpler to tweak than the physical world is. And because of that, anything that you can catch before implementation of the physical, at least, is really, really important. And that com uh, I mean, uh, comes to the con conclusion of my talk, that, that some of the challenges that we have is that we can, we can simulate and prototype a lot of things, but simulating and prototyping takes out a small part of the entire equation. And you, so, so sometimes you prove wrong by just proving something with a prototype. I'm not talking against prototypes. I'm just saying that you need to, I mean, add it up sometimes and remember that it's only a, a part of the, uh, a small part of the equation. Um, another problem that, that we have with these very integrated projects between physicality and, uh, and uh, technology is that, uh, at least in the building industry, uh, many things are split into subcontracts. And it's pretty hard to hand over projects like this to subcontractors they say, now this is fixed, and then, and, and, and then they leave, and I mean, it doesn't work with the physical or it's woven uh, badly together. Most often, we come in late with projects like this, which becomes, makes it even harder to weave into the API uh, of the physical fabric, if you could say so. Um, so so, 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 so that, are, that, that are some of the problems that, uh, that we are facing. So my, my uh, conclusion would be that uh, physical exceptions, they should be caught, and digital ones, they might be tweakable. Thanks for listening.
get up, get out there and hook up. what you said about the, the software being easier to tweak than the physical world because, I mean, it, it makes so much sense, but sometimes I guess that that's not the way people act. They think we're going to put it out there and then we're going to, you know, see what happens. Or, But the, in, in, in when you're creating, you got to get it as far as you can before yeah. you, you bring it up. But I actually think there was a, a nice talk uh, from this guy who just sat down. Sorry, I can't remember your name. But I mean, that actually also, that, told that, that building software is also building on top of the city, of the city, of the city, in some sense. And sometimes we would like to sweep everything and start from scratch, which is not possible. But still, sometimes it is much easier to tweak parts of software. I know you cannot necessarily change the entire structure. But it's hard when st something is built to tweak it. Plus, there is a mindset of what you're saying, you know, with, with the smile, you're saying the idiots that are not using it as intended. But really, that is the type of arrogance that, that stops you from <laughs> creating innovation, you know? Yeah. I mean, the fact that you're very aware of this is not, you're not that case, but there'll be people that are saying, hey, this is how you should be using yeah. it. What, one great case that I, I like to bring up sometimes is uh, there's this young guy, and he was broken up with by his girlfriend. And she blocked him on all media. Like, he couldn't get in touch with her. With her. So he went into mobile pay <laughs> because he knew he could write a message from mobile pay. And he'd keep sending her one crown, just one crown, and said, please unblock me. And like, please, yeah. you know, I Excellent. was an idiot and did a mistake. But that's such a good example of, like, the creativity of how just doing it as it was absolutely not intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thanks a lot. Thanks. Yeah, uh, and, um,